I've been faithful All my life you have been so, so good Every breath that I have To all God's beloved who are called to be saints, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Matthew 5, 8. Wow, amazing. Out of all these eight beatitudes, this one's a cut above the rest. A pure heart shall see God. King David knew this very well. He writes in Psalm 24, verse 3, Who shall ascend the hill of the Lord? And who shall stand in his holy place? He who has clean hands and a pure heart. Hill of the Lord, the mountain of the Lord, represents God's holy presence. The first thing that we learn from this beatitude is, Jesus is concerned with our heart. He did not come with a rule book or a list of do's and don'ts. His aim is to change the heart of sinners like you and me, not with a rod, but by revealing the Father's heart to every one of us, to all humanity. See what love the Father has lavished on us, that we should be called children of God, and so we are. We are called to be like our Heavenly Father, Holy as He is, perfect as He is. Isn't that beautiful? Isn't that wonderful? Isn't that great? We are children of God, heirs of the kingdom. A teacher of the law once approached Jesus with a question, which commandment is the first of all? And Jesus answers him, Hear Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, and you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your might, and with all your strength. And you shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no commandment greater than these two. So brilliant and true. Brothers and sisters, you and I are commanded by the highest power and authority of heaven to love God, to love neighbor with all of our hearts, not just a part, not for a moment, not when we feel things are good for us or when we are on cloud nine, but for all time to come. And this is a very painful process because it involves the cross. And the cross means suffering, dying to self, dying to our ego, dying to our pride, Dying to our will, dying to our Our life as a Christian is meant to be lived out of a pure heart. Just as gold is tested in the fire for its real beauty and shine, so shall we, you and I, be tested through our trials, through our persecutions, through hardships, through temptations, through rejection. We are set apart and called to reflect the image of Jesus the lily of the valley, pure and holy. How can we strive for a pure heart? How can I possess a pure heart? Is it possible? Yes, it is. Take one day at a time. Look at the lives of the saints. They were just like us, sinners, and yet they lived out the life with purity and holiness 
once they embraced the cross, once they gave Jesus that first place in their lives. Spend time in prayer alone with Jesus. Establish a relationship with Him through an ongoing communication. Jesus is a great friend and will always be one forever. He will stick by us through thin and thick. Unlock your life to Him. Let Him untie the knots that have bound you. Make Him a part of your life, not just a guest. But give Him a PR, a permanent resident. What we hold and treasure fills our heart. Where your treasure is, there your heart will be. Matthew 6, 21. If we treasure Christ, then Christ will fill us. Fill us with His joy and peace and love. If we treasure sin, then sin will fill us with hate, anger, unforgiveness, slander, gossip. Do not have Jesus Christ on your lips and the world in your heart. Saint Ignatius of Antioch. A question that we all need to ask ourselves. How much of the world is in my heart? A bitter truth given to us. It's time to introspect and examine our hearts and lives with honesty and sincerity. The lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, pride, gossip, falsehood, idolatry, slander, drunkenness, adultery, unforgiveness, disobedience, and the list of sin goes on. Do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, love for the Father is not in him. 1 John 2.15 Want to know how much you love God? Do you want to know how much you love God? Check out the love you have for your neighbor, for your family, community members, colleagues, people associated with you, business circle, beloved. Let us love one another. For love is of God, and he who loves is born of God and knows God. 1 John 4, 7 and 8 He who does not love God does not know God. And we all know what love is. St. Paul tells us in his letter that love is kind, love is patient. It doesn't keep a list of wrongdoings, and it goes on. Learn the heart of God. From the word of God, Pope St. Gregory the Great. And let the word of God shape your heart like the heart of God, like the heart of Jesus. Sweetness, kindness, love, simplicity, compassion, gentleness, merciful, giving and forgiving. And one very outstanding virtue and quality of Jesus was sensitivity. He was very sensitive to the needs of the people, to their feelings, to their longings, to their pain, to their burdens, to their physical ailments. Very sensitive. We are going to be like him. Sensitive. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. A heart that is fully devoted to loving God that seeks to do the will of God, that is humble and contrite, that's a heart that shall see God here and now, as He reveals His glorious presence in our daily living. We are not perfect. All of us are imperfect, still impure, but He is still working in us to make us what we ought to be. Isn't that wonderful? Our life is in the hands of the Creator, who created the heavens and the earth, the galaxies, the universe. Marvelous. Jesus, meek and humble of heart, make my heart like unto thine, a simple yet powerful prayer. These are days of great trials and struggles that we are living in. Fear and confusion have taken over. Let us remember that we have a Father in heaven who seems so distant but he is very, very near to us in these moments, in these times, in these insecure, 
moments of us. Draw close to him. Pray for a change of heart. Remember the promise of God through the prophet Ezekiel, chapter 36, verses 25 to 27. I will sprinkle clean water on you, and you will be clean. I will cleanse you from all your impurities and from all your idols. I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit in you. I will remove from you your heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh. And I will put my spirit in you and move you to follow my decrees and be careful to keep my laws. We have to guard ourselves. We have to be careful. Trust him and he will give you a brand new heart. He is a great physician and a par excellence heart specialist. Permit him and he will perform a gentle heart transplant over you. He won't hurt you. He won't harm you. When your broken, aching heart is in his hands, rest assured you are safe and God bless you. Thank you and God bless.